Kia ora, here's question 3E from last year's differentiation paper. Okay, so in this question we end up working with a differential equation, but it's an excellent question that's actually quite straightforward to see what we need to do. So we start out with this function, y is equal to e to the x cos of kx, and we have to differentiate it once and then twice. So it's not too bad a function, we're just going to have to use the product rule a few times, and the algebra gets a bit messy. The big challenge in the question is not to muck your algebra up. It's not really a hard calculus problem. And then in the second part, we have to find all values of k such that this function satisfies this differential equation for all values of x. In other words, we're going to substitute from here, and then we're going to solve for k. All right, so I'm going to start that on a new slide. Make sure that you um, pause the video and have a go and keep your working really, really clear. You might want to use um, two different colours of pen for the simplifying part. Okay, so starting off, what do we have? Y is equal to e to the x cos of kx. So differentiating, I'm going to be using the product rule. The first function times the derivative of the second. So here I need the chain rule. I'm going to have negative sine kx times k. Plus, the other way around, differentiate the e to the x and leave the cos of kx. So we can clean that up and we'll get e to the x times cos kx minus k sine kx. And off we go again. Second derivative coming up, same thing product rule. The first function times the derivative of the second, so negative k sine kx minus k times k, so k squared cos of kx. Right, so we'll sort that out. Um, that's only, oh, that's only the first part though. We've, um, Got, I've forgotten the next part of the product rule. Don't worry, I was going to work that out. Right, there's e to the x, the derivative of this, times the function. So cos of kx minus k sine kx. So I'm um, collecting up like terms. I've got e to the x times negative sine k. I'll just do it without talking. So that's the first line of cleanup, and now I can see that I've got some like terms in here. I've got minus k sine k kx, and then again down there. So we get this, e to the x times cos of kx minus 2k sine kx minus k squared cos of kx. Okay, so we've got our first derivative, and we've got our second derivative. And we've got our function, so we're ready to do the second part of the problem. So the second part of the problem, you'll need to go back to the slides, to the earlier slide. I'll, I'll just, actually, I'll write up. Okay, I'll write up the DE that we've got to substitute into. We've got D squared Y by DX squared minus 2. DY by DX plus 2Y is equal to 0. Now we're going to substitute in what we had. So e to the x times this. This is the second derivative. Right, there's that one. That's a k. Now minus 2 times this. There's that. There's that one, and now the last one we've got, whoops, we've lost a bracket on the other side, plus 2y, and so y is just 2 e to the x cos of kx. Didn't need all those brackets. So this is what we're solving. We're trying to solve this for k. Right, now let's take a look. First thing I'm going to do is take out the e to the x, just so that I can see what's going on.
hopefully we're going to see things starting to fall out then we do so that's changed to a plus because I've got a minus here and a minus here so 2k sine kx plus 2 cos kx and that all equals zero so there are some things that are going to disappear which is really nice and I'm going to underline them so that you see them I've got minus 2k sine kx plus 2k sine kx and I've got minus 2k minus 2 cos kx plus that so the whole thing collapses now to give me this e to the x times cos of kx minus k squared cos of kx equals zero and I can take out another common factor which is e to the x cos of kx times one minus k squared is equal to zero and I'm looking for the values of k that are going to make this true for all x values so there are no values of k in here so nothing to worry about here is there any value of k that will make this true for everything in other words if I'm trying to solve this cos of kx equals zero is there a value of k that will make that true so let's try the obvious one what if I make k equals zero well, then I have cos of 0 everywhere, but that's not equal to 0. It equals 1. So there's nothing, no solution there. So the only way that I'm going to have this true for all values of x is if 1 minus k squared is equal to 0. So k squared is equal to 1, so my final answer is k is equal to 1 or negative 1. Thanks for watching.